Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and welcome to the channel. We ask one question here, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Uh, a lot of people, old and young, think that the old music is better than the new, but I'm not so sure. And today, you know, I've been saying we're going to try something different. But one thing that's important to look at is legacy artists. So sometimes people record into the 21st century that are people from 60s, 70s, 80s, 80s. Heck, uh, there are still some 50s people alive. Uh, can you believe Pat Boone's still alive? So uh, anyway, uh, we're going to look at uh, David Bowie today and rank his six albums from the 21st century, including Hours that came out in October of 1999, but had several singles and a tour in 2000. So David Bowie, I mean, what can you say? He was still uh, vital in the 21st century. Some artists are not. I hear some uh, cars going by here. Sorry about that. It's a... Uh, it's just can't do anything about it. It's a loud city, but uh, anyhow, I'm going to rank his six albums from 1999 to 2016. And so let's start with number six on the list, and that one is Hours. So Hours is a pretty darn good album. It's got some great singles, and I like the first uh, most of the first six tracks, and then track seven, eight, and nine and ten that hit the back of the album are kind of uh, the album loses a little steam but this was an album that he produced with uh, or co-produced with Reeves Gabriels his uh, guitar player and has some wonderful singles on it. it has Thursday's Child has Seven has Survive uh, it was a pretty high profile album I remember when it came out there was a lot of publicity surrounding it but ultimately it's not uh, a solid album from end to end. It's a little bit of a chore getting through those last four songs except for a brief instrumental called Brilliant Adventure which they then named a compilation after that song. It's just less than two minutes, sweet little instrumental. I like it quite a bit. So Hours, my number six. Coming in at number five from 20... 14, I think, 2013 or 2014, the next day. Now, hours I give three stars to. This one we're going up to three and a half stars. It's, it's um, got a lot of really great tracks, but there's something about the production. You know, even though Tony Visconti produced everything after hours, everything from 2000 on, uh, there's just something about it. It's um, it's it's good production, but some of the songs aren't um, super super exciting. So this is an album that um, you know no, this is the one that no one expected, and he surprised everybody on his birthday, or actually I guess a little before his birthday, and just dropped this, and nobody knew he was recording it. It had been. Um, Let's see, about 2004 was his heart attack. So it had been about a decade. And all he had done was a live performance with David Gilmore on an old Pink Floyd song. And he had done, uh, let's see, there was one track that he did for, no, I, I'm not, sorry, I'm, my memory slipping me. He might have done one track in that time, one studio track, but that would be the maximum. Nobody expected it. And that's the one with the controversial cover where he takes heroes and whites out his face. You know, I like this album. I was pretty excited about it when it came out, but it's lost a little bit of steam. Nevertheless, it's got um, a couple of my favorite tracks on it. And uh, the, now the opening track, The Next Day, is kind of a reworking of, I believe, Repetition from Lodger. It's definitely one of the tracks from Lodger because I recognize the music. And that's fine. Bowie's done that before. He reworks his material and borrows a lot of ideas and 
sings a lot of themes of nostalgia. Um, the next day is actually a more solid album through and through than ours, which is why I give it three and a half stars. But it only has one or two real strong uh, standout tracks, whereas ours has maybe three or four really strong songs. But ultimately, the next day is a more satisfying listen all the way through. There's not a bad song on it. Uh, it's just got some average songs. So I give that one three and a half stars. Coming in at uh, number four on my list is 2000's canceled but then leaked album Toy. So I don't know if you're familiar with this album. It's one of the last ones that they've released uh, just in the last year or two. But I had a bootleg copy of this for years with a different song lineup, and now it's a little bit longer. And it's all recordings of his uh, mostly 60s material when he was a mod. We're talking pre-Space Oddity. And a lot of those songs I like, but, you know, they were kind of cheesily recorded. And then, of course, on those albums, you've got some real clunkers. You've got songs like The Laughing Gnome and songs like Please Mr. Gravedigger, and really some embarrassing songs in his catalog. But I always love songs like The London Boys and In the Heat of the Morning and Let Me Sleep Beside You. And uh, some of these were also recorded for BBC, and I like those versions as well. I always liked the melodies and the lyrics. So he went back with his uh, touring band, cut this album in 2000, and it is so beautifully produced. It might be the best of the six albums in terms of just a warm sound and all the balance of the instruments. So it's, it's an oddity in his uh, catalog because it's all uh, material that was written decades before but then performed in a modern 2000 style. I think it works. Some people find it odd. Uh, but quite a few tracks on there. Some songs that I completely dismissed, like Karma Man, come off sounding pretty good on this album. And it's a fun listen, like I say, just really a, a sweet, sweet production. And uh, finally came out officially, and I, I really like that album. It's got a frightening album cover, which I, I just showed to you. Um, very frightening but uh, cool at the same time. And so uh, so those songs, I mean, you'd have to be a real hardcore David Bowie fan like myself, uh, which I am. I've listened to his entire catalog, seen him four times, four times in concert. So, you know, big fan, been following him, and I followed him right through the 21st century. And he's uh, tries to, he tried to stay cutting edge. So coming in at number three, is the 2001 album, uh, yeah, 2001 Heathen. So I love the sound of this album. By that I mean sonically. I talked about how good the production is on Toy. This is well produced as well. Uh, but it's um, it's got these little beeps and blurps and, and little electronic things in a whole different style than ours. Ours was a very electronic album, but more keyboard oriented. And this one's just a lot of little, almost like radio signals on the song Sunday, and you have Slip Away and Slow Burn and uh, some other uh, deep tracks. I like the covers on this album. Uh, he does a cover of the Pixies Cactus that's really nice. He does a Neil Young cover from Neil Young's debut album way back in the 60s. And uh, he also does this really bizarre cover of the legendary Stardust Cowboy. Um, I wish I wish I was a Gemini, sp I'd like to ride a Gemini spaceship, something I can't remember the exact title. But there's three covers on the album. I think they're all strong, I like them. So Heathen is a good solid listen all the way through. One of the comments on this album, I guess a lot of people thought it was a 911 album, and then he revealed that he actually wrote a lot of the songs before. In fact, I think he wrote all of them before the Twin Towers fell, but the songs could be taken in that context, and he said he was a little bit spooked 
by it. Uh, so anyway, Heathen, uh, let's see, uh, I didn't rate Toy. Toy I would give three and a half stars to, and Heathen I would give four stars to. So I really like this album. I, I remember when it came out. It was a slow grower. So I can't say that I liked Heathen on the first listen or two, even though I was a sophisticated Bowie listener. It was just uh, unusual to my ears and not as immediate as ours was very immediate, very accessible. But Heathen is a grower, and the more time you spend with it, uh, the better it is. There's some crossover between that album and Toy in that one of the songs from Toy, Uncle Floyd, and the song Slip Away from here are pretty much the same lyrics, or at least the same theme. And so when Toy was canceled, he borrowed a couple ideas from that album, and, and then later Toy got released, so now you've got some duplication there. So now we're down to the top two. And my number two album is Reality from 2003. This is also a well-produced album. Uh, it doesn't have the warmth of Toy, but it's uh, crystal clear, very clean production. And just a lot of really great songs like New Killer Star and Dog's Fault, what is it called? Uh, sorry, I can't, I'm not uh, looking at uh, my screen right now. Uh, but the, um, you've got, um, you, well, you got some covers on here too. You got Jonathan Richmond's Pablo Picasso and you've got George Harrison's Try Some, Buy Some. Uh, there are, uh, lots of great songs like Bring Me the Disco King and The Loneliest Guy, which that song um, is going to just miss my top 10 songs, spoiler alert. Uh, but if you listen to the Reality Tour album that came out the next year, that version of The Loneliest Guy is just killer. I prefer the live version. He also re-recorded uh, Rebel Rebel is one of the, I think it was a bonus track, but uh, kind of um, unnecessary. I, you know, I still prefer the original version of Rebel Rebel. But Reality is a, a great album. I did not see that tour. I wish I had. I had a friend who went to that show, and I've also got the DVD, and I thought, oh, damn. I really blew it not going to that show. And, of course, how did I know he was going to have a heart attack, right? So I thought, oh, I can see him next time. Well, there was no next time. He never toured again. So I know what I was thinking of before. Uh, before the next day, he did, uh, he did a performance with Arcade Fire. That, that's what it was that he did between the David Gilmore and the next day. So it's up there. It's up there. It just uh, There's many floors to the uh, library and sometimes I gotta take a couple elevators up there so bear with me and that leaves our number one album if you're counting it's easy to figure it out it's his final album Black Star and I love every track on this album now I was looking um, earlier at a site called Rate Your Music and they have Black Star listed as the seventh seventh best album of the 2010s now that's saying a lot. And that's one reason that I'm doing this episode on Bowie. Because he's a legacy artist that still had something to say and still made some great music. And this album is really fresh. There was uh, really no album like it. When he got uh, Donnie Maslin and his jazz band to come in and, and play on this, it just didn't sound like any other Bowie album. So we haven't even talked about the lyrics yet. Uh, so many great songs, uh, ones that just missed my list. Uh, uh, the song Sue and the song Dollar Days and I Can't Give Everything Away. All great songs. And then, of course, the singles Black Star and Lazarus. And, of course, the video to Lazarus is a master art. Um, that's the one with him with the bandaged eyes. And what a, 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 a great, great song about, um, you know, I'm so high it makes my brain whirl, just talking about being, a, being um, just a couple steps from death. Uh, 
So this is the album he dropped, and then two days later, he died. So, wow, it's um, just such a... Sonically, with those saxes. And of course, David Bowie was a sax player, but he doesn't play any sax on here. He leaves all the sax and flute work to uh, Donnie, Donnie, Danny, Donnie Maslin. Uh, wow. Just the mood of that album, the sonics and some of the squealing saxophone. Such an emotional album. And all those allusions to death. It really was, uh, a couple of the songs really were a death letter. Love this album. He had scrapped all the previous people he'd worked with except Visconti on production and kept that album under wraps and just produced a masterpiece. So Black Star, that's my number one album. I hope you enjoyed this. It's something new I'm doing, um, album rankings. And the idea here is to take only the 21st century music of a legacy artist and rank that and I thought you might enjoy that uh, most people they do a ranking of his entire catalog but I wanted to talk about the six albums that he did in this millennium and uh, let you know what my favorites are oh and I did not rank those last couple reality I would give I think uh, four probably four stars, close to four and a half. And Black Star, swinging between a four and a half and five. Yeah, kind of right between there. Fantastic album and uh, just blew everybody away. And it's been six years now since Black Star was released. So the freshness of that story has passed and I think six years gives me enough time, all of us enough time, to objectively look at that album and say, yep, it was indeed a masterpiece. In fact, I think it's aged even better since then. So I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, we can do more like this or less like this, just depending. I got a poll out there right now waiting for some of the votes to come in. And uh, that's it. So. I'm a little bit laid back tonight, I guess. I usually speak a little more quickly, but thank you for joining me on the channel. If you like what I'm doing here, hit the subscribe or like button. We're getting close to 500 subscribers, and there are some things I can do in YouTube once I hit that milestone. So help me out, if you will. And uh, as we say here in Mexico, buen dia.